Hey everyone, it's Linda Hart here. Welcome back to my channel. Well, it's the start of hurricane season and you know what that means, be prepared. Hey everyone, it's Linda Hart here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Linda Hart and I am a local St. Petersburg, Florida real estate agent and I make videos educating owners and people who wanna own property how to buy and sell real estate as well as money saving tips to help you put more money back in your pocket. Today, we're talking about hurricane season and how we Floridians get prepared. Before we get started, I wanna remind you to hit the bell and subscribe to my channel to be notified every time I drop a new video, which is usually every Thursday. Well, it's June 1st, and that means only one thing in Florida, the start of hurricane season. If you don't live in the area, hurricane season lasts from June 1st to November 30th. That's the time when we Floridians watch the weather channel and our radar to see where the latest storm is and how we can be prepared. As a real estate agent, I have a lot of clients that ask me, I'm moving to Florida, what do I need to do to prepare? These are my top tips on how we as Floridians prepare for hurricanes and keep it as stress-free as possible. The old Boy Scout motto, be prepared. As long as you prepare in advance, hurricane season really doesn't have to be that stressful. Yes, there's always the stress of whether the hurricane is gonna come your way and cause a threat to your home or your community, but as long as you are prepared, it really does make things easier because then you don't have to worry that you're gonna go without. Uh, recently, we've gone through the pandemic and we've had issues of people getting supplies in the store such as toilet paper, paper towels, and that's kind of stressful. If you prepare now, then that avoids you having to go to the store and panic shop like we all did during COVID-19. Battery operated fans are a must. One of the things that people worry about when hurricanes are coming, we're gonna lose power. And in Florida, it's hot and it's muggy when there's no air conditioning. Stock up on those C and D batteries and get yourself a couple of battery operated fans or three. One for every member of your family. They will thank you. If you have elderly parents or elderly people that live with you or around you, or even children with special needs, you plan in advance for that. Many um, area shelters need to know these things in advance. Your pets. Please, please, please do not leave your pets behind if you have to evacuate. It is so heartbreaking for me as a pet lover to see on the news pets being rescued by emergency personnel. Please make sure that you accommodate for your pets and make sure that you, you have extra supplies for them. Get extra dog food or cat food, medications, pet beds, and whatever else that you feel that needs to go in your box so that you don't have to scramble at the last minute. And also a tip, if you're going to another area and you're staying in a hotel, not all hotels will take a pet. This is a bonus tip. If you are evacuating, make sure you go to the fill your gas tank early and beat those lines at the gas station. This one we've heard, we've all heard of, store water in your bathtub. Now, a lot of people think, oh, I'm not gonna drink water out of my bathtub. No, it's not for drinking. It's for washing dishes, wash some laundry if you need it, if you're without power for many, many days. When we had Hurricane Irma come through, my neighborhood was out of power for a week. So it, it could last some time. So take a lesson from those who've been through it. Add water to your bathtub. You'll be glad you did. Speaking of water, buy or store one gallon per person per day. So if you have a family of four, you are going to need 12 gallons of water to last you three days. So one gallon of water per person for however many days you're planning. Best case scenario, plan for three to five days. If you can't find any water in the store because you procrastinated, you can store water in empty milk jugs like this. So keep your milk, clean out the jugs, and fill them up with water and keep them in your garage through hurricane season. If you don't use them, great. 
dump them out and recycle the jugs. But if you need them, they'll be there. And I recommend putting filtered water in there because these are gonna be used for drinking. Power banks for electronics, whether it be the blocks that you see or the small little power chargers that you plug your phone into, your kids are gonna to need to be entertained and they're gonna to wanna to be on their phones and you're gonna to need to have access to your power for your phones if you wanna keep up to date on storm progression, uh, what the weather's doing and all of that. Some people uh, will invest in a generator and that will help power your refrigerator or uh, any home electronics that you need. You need to have access to a computer or keep those electronics charged up. A first aid kit. Now you can go out and buy one of those first aid kits or I just get a little tub uh, and I invest in band-aids, bandages, antibacterial uh, ointment, some medical tape just in case, uh, and some gauze. Um, Walmart will sell uh, you know the little first aid kits that you can have on hand very inexpensively. Just throw that in your hurricane box. It will always be there and you won't have to think about it. Okay, I gotta know, are you a preparer or are you a procrastinator? Let me know in the comments. Don't depend solely on the news stations to give you your weather updates. Uh, I know that the Weather Channel can be kind of fanta fantastical. What's the word? They kind of blow it up. They do have good radar. So what I do is I go online and I look at the, the radar at theweatherchannel.com. Uh, instead of watching their TV broadcast because I can only take so much of Jim Cantori. But I do like their radar and I also go to the NOAA site, which I'll link below. And so you can guys can check out those websites. Um, also, there's some good local uh, Tampa Bay area weather people that I follow um, on social media. And my favorite is Dennis Phillips with Channel 10. And he just has uh, he's just real and he'll give you like the bare bones of whether or not you need to panic and he has all these rules of what to do in hurricane season so he's pretty cool. Rule number seven, don't panic. Now that you've gotten everything ready for you, make a list of all of your neighbors and their phone numbers and text them and can't reach them by phone uh, or text, try to email and just check on them and find out how they're doing. Join forces if you need supplies or whatever, and your neighbors can be very helpful. Check on them and you know, hopefully they'll check on you too. And this is about community. When you're going through a crisis like that, it's always good to know that you have your neighbors looking out for you. And my number one tip, you have to protect your home. Protecting your home is number one. If you are going to stay in your home or if you're going to evacuate, it's something that we have to do. So I've put together a handy checklist for preparing your home in the case of a hurricane. So if you click on the link below, that will take you over to my website and you can download that there. So to wrap this up, hurricanes are very scary, especially when you're new to Florida but they are so easy to prepare for as long as you do things in advance. Get your hurricane boxes ready, get your supplies. It's not gonna hurt anything to store them in your garage or in your shed until you're ready to use them. You'll be glad you did. Don't forget, new video every Thursday. Stay safe, everybody, and if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks for watching, have a great day. Please remember to hit the like button if you like this video and I'd appreciate it if you consider subscribing if you think that this information is helpful. Have a great day.